Michael Jordan, all he does is win scoring titles. He never wins championships. That was my chance to get in the category of Larry Bird and Magic Johnson. <laughs> Fast and furious. Magic was the tires on the car. Larry was the engine. I want you to know something. There's only one man that can guard me, and that's God. Now, now think about that for a second. Strange moment. I'm like, damn, how you doing that? Coming <laughs> down, and Larry gets me at the top of the key, and he's walking me underneath this basket. He goes, Coop, I'm ready to wear your ass out. What? Matty Johnson and Larry Bird are the two most important figures in NBA history. As Charles Barkley said, Magic Johnson and Larry Bird are two of the most critical figures in basketball history. They revolutionized the game and left a mark that will never be forgotten. Magic Johnson brought a unique energy to the NBA. His core vision, contagious smile, and versatile skills set him apart. His style of play, whether it was a no-look pass, an assist behind the back, or a fast break, was truly one of a kind. On the other hand, Larry Bird was a cold killer on the court. A perfect blend of toughness, skill, and an unyielding desire to win. His amazing basketball IQ, Talent for making clutch shots and intense rivalry with Magic set him apart. Their unique qualities continue to influence the game today. In this special collection, I've gathered some of the most compelling stories from NBA legends who played with and against Magic and Larry. You will hear from Hall of Famers, teammates, and rivals that recount their most memorable encounters, the intensity of their battles, and the sheer intelligence that defined these two legends. So here are NBA legends and players sharing the greatest Larry Bird and Magic Johnson stories. Enjoy the video, man. You was on the court when Doc and Larry got into it. What caused that? Man, first of all, <laughs> I, I hate the NBA for that reason. They owe me $5,000. <laughs> I'm still pissed to this day. Because the one thing I would never do right. is hold a guy for another guy to hit him. And I've been mad. I'm still mad this day. Y'all owe me $5,000, Adam Silver. <laughs> so, Larry Bird was a great trash talker. Okay. And he's like, Charles, y'all better get this old man off me. <laughs> I'm telling you. And he's just roasting Doc. Yeah. He's like, and this is Doc last year, I think. He was right there. It was either last year or the year before. And he's killing Doc. <laughs> and he's like, Chuck, I'm telling you for the last time, you better get over here because I'm going to kill this old man. <laughs> and he, it goes on up and down. And he, Larry, just killing him. And Doc had just had enough. And I just had them, we, they come together, and I just kind of grab Larry. I'm not even looking at Doc. When I went back and looked at the tape, Doc was nailing his ass. I was just trying to pull guys apart. Yeah, but you know you can't ever fight. You can't grab one unless somebody grab you. Hey, hey, hey you grab him. You I grabbed grab Larry because I didn't want him hitting Doc. But ain't nobody grabbed Doc. I know. <laughs> I know. But but you just said something. If I grab Doc and Larry started pummeling, I ain't, I can't go back to Philly. <laughs> right. I can't go back to Philly. So I grabbed Larry to stop him from hitting Doc, and Doc welling away. <laughs> but Doc, it started because Doc was like, Larry's like, yo, man, y'all better get, and he's screaming it too, everybody can hear it. Y'all better get this old man off me, I'm gonna kill him out here. Plan. My favorite three-point story of all time was my first time I ever competed. And of course, you know, I don't know how they do it now, but they bring you in a locker room, you know, you're all sitting there, you know, kind of talking with one another, waiting for them to call you to go out. Uh -huh. And uh, Larry Bird was in the contest my first year, and uh, everybody was in the room, but Larry wasn't there. And there were guys were kind of saying, anybody seen Larry? You know, whatever. And all of a sudden, you know, right before we're supposed to go out, the door opens and Larry sticks his head in. And he says, oh, hey, guys, this must be the room for second place. So, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, so that was my first experience with then. I was like, <laughs> of course, uh, he went out and won it that year. So... So you got to have a little bit of confidence in yourself, too, going in. So it helps. Oh, my yeah. goodness. <laughs> one, thing, one thing you got to give Larry Bird, he could be red hot or ice cold. He never stopped talking trash. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Ever. Ever. I got one, too. I, 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 he, he, uh, great story. Playing the Phoenix Suns and their, their main man, was Tom Chambers. And Chambers was guarding, was guarding Larry. Larry Bird with a left-handed hook. Watch how he comes up on the other side. Two-handed. 
Brandon. Hale the rebound to Bird. Nice. This back to Paris. Nice. Pick and roll. Hornacek had it. Lost it. And so in, in the jump ball circle, Larry walked through myself and, and uh, Chambers and then came back and told Chambers, I know you're guarding me, and I want you to know something. There's only one man that can guard me, and that's God. <laughs> now, now think about that for a second. Think about the confidence and the arrogance it takes to make that statement. <laughs> think about that for a second. Hey, Rob, let me ask you this one. Uh, there's a story going around where Casey Jones was drawing up a play, and you guys were all in the huddle, and I guess he was having a hard time saying it. Larry told him, hey, give me the ball, and the rest of you guys get the hell out of the way. <laughs> Is that true? That, see, the story behind that, Kevin was the one that had the hot hand. But as we all know, Larry's the man, and that's Larry's team. So Larry should take the first shot. But KC was torn between drawing up something for Kevin because he had the hot hand and not offending Larry. So Larry just took the F over. Quick. This was when when we talking about the UCLA pickup runs. So this is when Magic was retired. And Matt played up there in college. Uh, Matt, Magic used to come up there with his own team. He bring his own five. <laughs> a bunch of old dudes. He retired. <laughs> I'm a young dude in the league. I'm a rookie. Yep. So he never, I never seen him lose a game in the pickup runs. And this is Magic about 10 years retired already. Yep. So he come, I'm guarding him in the post. The game is tied up 6-6. Six, six, we going to seven. I'm like, all right, I got Magic. Magic go up, shoot the hook. I challenge the shot. He missed the hook. We get the rebound, throw it ahead. We score. Game over. Magic looked down like, no, nah, no, nah, that don't count. That's a foul. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even touch him. I didn't even touch him. Young fella, I didn't even touch him. He, he put the ball in, he get the ball back in the post, shoot the hook, and win the game. <laughs> oh, ain't no way you can beat Magic. Uh, no, no. They both, they both made guys better. They yeah. both made both made their teammates better. They both cared about nothing but winning. You know, they didn't care about individual stats and MVP trophies and none of that stuff. They cared about winning. Uh, they both had incredible, you know, basketball IQs. Uh, they both were unbelievable on the court as far as seeing the game and making passes that you just didn't see. You know, neither one could jump very high. You know, I mean, yeah. those, those are probably the similarities. I mean, they both were six nine, <clears throat> but they were both the ultimate competitors. Yeah, you know, and um, you know, Larry did a little bit more shit talking than, than Magic. Magic would talk only when you you know really got up into him and started messing with him. Then he would be like, "Oh, okay," you know. Yeah. But Larry was talk from the beginning of the game to the end of the game. He didn't care. <laughs> But I think those similarities is the reason why those two guys were so competitive. And, yeah. You know, I mean, it, it started in college. You know, Indiana, Indiana State against Michigan State in the most viewed, televised NCAA game in history. You know, watch these two guys go at it. And then that kind of carried over into the NBA. His energy is real high. He feels like he's in an opportunity to prove himself. And showcase that, hey, look. I'm still Magic Johnson. We st I still dominate this game. That's all right. That's all right. Here we go. We go from here. As much as it was five on five, we could see in Monte Carlo that it was gravitating towards, okay, Michael and Magic. I'll never forget everything just started. It went in slow motion. Jess Kersey is standing there. I'm looking at him, and we froze. We celebrating. And Jess Kersey starts to count because he's standing there and he, he has the one count. So I run over, we, we look at the bench, no timeout, nothing. So I run over and I grab the ball. And this is probably one of the most incredible plays that's ever happened against me and that probably I've ever witnessed from an athletic standpoint, two people being in sync and Jess Bird just Plan every second. And that's what the Celtics taught us, to play every second. Not to play 47 and a half minutes, mm -hmm. but to play a full 48. So I grabbed the ball from the referee, Lambeer's good foul shooter. I never had taken the ball out. I, that wasn't my thing, right? I, I, I throw it up. 
Bird sneaks in. I didn't even see him. But the thing I remember the most is that joker. This is the out of bounds line. <laughs> that joker caught the ball, and in my mind, I'm like, okay, he going out of bounds. That dude did this, like a ballerina, right? And if you go back and you watch the play, that dude is on his toes. The, the, the baseline is right up under his toes. And in my mind, he must have stood there for about five seconds because every, <laughs> everything was going in slow motion in my mind, right? And, then, and it's like, I'm like, and then it is, it's, it's just a strange moment. I'm like, damn, how you doing that? <laughs> <laughs> Showtime was born when he arrived. Personality off the scale, energetic 24 7. Had to get straight down the middle. Still going, still going. Oh! Highlight film. Showtime. Oh, you gotta love it. How did he see him? I always say that if I had to pick a team, he's my first pick because I know he's gonna make whoever else I pick way better than they than they are. When you walk out of the locker room, here's this guy that's like, you know, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's get it on, let's do this, let's do this, let's do that. So all of a sudden you got this college atmosphere with the Lakers because Magic brought all of that fear. He came in, man, he's pushing that ball up the floor, and we were like, we got to run. <laughs> and if you didn't look up, and he was like, look up, Wood, I was like, hey! And the ball was right there. When I went to the Great Western Forum, then watch Magic come down and do his thing, you know, and orchestrate his team and make them understand this way, this, this we're going to run this. And I mean, I was in awe, you know, and, and Don Nelson, he had to call the time out and had to take me out the game because he's like, I hope you're not going all and watching him and not really playing. I want to tell him, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I mean, I need to sit down for a minute because why? Wow, it took me a half just to realize that I'm, I'm, I'm playing against Magic. I remember one time coming into the, the huddle and I played against Magic a number of times and, and Dennis Johnson always uh, defended Irving and walked up to me and goes, man, is that guy strong or what? <laughs> I said, I know he's, he don't look very strong, but he's pretty strong. And he goes, Jesus, he said, some of the things that he does out here, he said, there's no way I can stop you. He said, but don't you ever tell him. <laughs> it was funny, that's with Larry Bird. One, I think we're in a car together. I'm posting him up. And he's laughing, and he was, he was telling me something. He's like, because you started that shit. Kiss your mama, and then we planned. You started that, man. Boo- hey, I listen, didn't they start bo- that shit to them. <laughs> they, the, the hey, they were booing me in Hartford. I'm like, well, motherfucker, I put, I'm from here. <laughs> hey, as, soon as, as soon as that shit started, I said, man, I hate Boston. And I ain't like, I was rooting for the Knicks all the time. <laughs> I don't know if you remember this game, Larry, but we playing at Hartford. It was an exhibition game. We went up one, and and we walk out on the court, and Benson is guarding Larry, right? And Larry looks at me and he go, he was calling me cheesy. He go, cheesy, like you, you putting him on me? <laughs> <laughs> he said, you you putting him on me? I was like, and I was like, that's all I got, man. That's all I got right now. He, and he go, I'm taking right down to the baseline. I'm shooting right over him. So after the game, our buses were lined up next to each other, right? And Larry goes, hey, man, don't, don't ever put that guy on me. <laughs> like, right? So the next year, coming back, right, we playing in Hartford again. And I, I said, Larry, I got some for your ass. Nah. He said, who? I said, Rodman. <laughs> I, said, this is, I said, I got somebody for you now. And I'm listening to a game. Is New Mexico State playing Indiana State? I don't really care about the game, but I, New Mexico State is right up the streets from El Paso, and I went to UTEP, and we're big rivalries. So I'm hoping that Indiana State will beat New Mexico State. And I'm listening to the radio, and I have no clue of the players on either team. All of a sudden, this name keeps coming, Bird. He goes to the right, Bird. He makes the shot, Bird. I said, God damn, who is Bird? Bird. You know, here's Bird. And Bird this, and, and Bird, oh, did you see the pass that Bird made? I can't see it, but I'm just trying to imagine it. And I, I, 
when the time I got to the end, I said, damn, that brother can play. tell you something. When I got the newspaper the next morning and saw Larry's picture, I said, damn. <laughs> Woo. Larry, they wasn't you, you, you know, be honest with you. The young lady that say you were her favorite player? Mine too. I love you too, Magic, but not as much as I like Bird. First of all, we got to Boston that night. He had this, he had some knee, he had some knee pain. I was like, it's a hell of a time for you to come up with a knee pain. <laughs> <laughs> he I ain't going tonight. You got to Yeah, you want to see that. Yeah, then I, I, I look at the boy on Sean Kemp, like, man, I'm like, so, you know, I look in the mirror, I'm like, well, shit, man, I'm about to get this motherfucker fits out here tonight. So I was, before the game, I was over there rubbing my hands, looking at him like, I'm about to get your ass, man. What year was this for you? This was my first year. Oh, okay. And um, that day, they came out with a, that morning, they came out with a USA, USA Today article, and they said that Larry didn't have it no more. Mm. So he came out that night to make a statement, and I was just the prime candidate to be yeah. this way. Right? Yeah. Before the game, he told me, he was like, he, he just shook his head at me. He said, man, it's going to be a fucked up night for you. <laughs> <laughs> so what did he put up? <laughs> I think he gave me, what he gave me? I think he gave me 40, 46 and 3. What'd you do? Well, I had to foul out, but I was on his ass. I'm going to tell, tell you all this, man. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you this when I was on. He was actually calling out bank shots. He would say, uh, "Next time, uh, bank shot left side. I'm gonna pump fake you. Your dumb ass gonna go for it." I'm gonna air he would tell you that, and it happened. And I said, "I said, first of all, I'm gonna be so close to you. If you if you shoot the ball next time, I'm gonna try to rip your fucking arm off your side." <laughs> and what you think he did, man? A quick pump fake, dog. And he you go for that shit here. Ah, got you, man. Come on, man. Kibbalari was how cold was? I don't think. I, I but don't I think guarded his ass so tough. Forty point triple double. I guarded his ass so tough that after the game, he came. He, he sent a little letter over there to me. That's he was like, dope. he was like, I've had nobody play defense that hard on me. Mm -hmm. I love it. He go, I appreciate you playing. I hate. Then he was like, I got a little All Star game. Why don't you come work out with me? Come to All Star game, man. That's dope. Let me see that that summer. I was like, shit, that meant everything to me. Yeah, that's so that's dope. From, you guys became a friends after absolutely, that. Absolutely, to this man, day. Absolutely. So it went from him whooping my ass right. to him teaching me a few things. I so love I, that. I, I surely appreciate hey, that's it. Dope. And that's that's the old NBA. That's how it used yeah, to. That's be, how it's man. supposed to be. You know, Larry never really talked to me. But one particular in the 85, no, it was 84 series, <clears throat> we're playing in the, in, the, in the forum. And this particular play down, there's a timeout, and they're coming down, and Larry gets me at the top of the key, and he's walking me underneath his basket. He goes, Coop, I'm ready to wear your ass out. What? Okay, I get down to my best defensive stance. He goes down the lane, he comes off the left side, and Robert Parrish sets a pick. Great picker. Great picker. Come off, and we knew the play. We knew what was coming up, and Kareem was ready. And as Larry comes off the pick, shoulder to shoulder with Parrish, and I'm trailing behind him, he catches the basketball right about the elbow. And he gets the ball, and he goes up, and Kareem stops him from turning the corner. Larry catches the ball. He goes up in the air, and here I come. And I'm like, I'm getting ready to smash this shit, man. So I jump up, and I got my hand, and I don't know how Larry got this ball between Kareem and I, because Kareem had his hands up. I'm coming with my right hand, because, and he had a great pass. I, I, like I said, I don't know how he got it to him. Hits Robert Parrish for a roll to the basket, Robert Dunson. And Larry looks over his shoulder at me and he laughs. He said, I told you, motherfucker. And you know what? <laughs> <laughs> that right there, uh, that, that shows you the essence and who this guy was. He was about team, he was about winning, he was about making plays. I spent the last couple of days with Magic Johnson shooting the Capital One commercials. And I, every time I see him, I tell him thank you because Magic Johnson and Larry Bird are the two most important figures in NBA history. I agree. Well, people don't understand, to answer your question, people look at this thing now where guys are making 30, 40, 50 million dollars. 
when I came in, it, it was uh, David Stern's first year, the average salary was $200,000. Mm. Magic and Bird, those guys changed the entire trajectory of the NBA and made it what it is today. Because Magic, and I, I told him this story, I says, and I'm playing with Dr. J and Moses. Mm -hmm. I remember the first time Magic, when he made a million dollars, we were going around high-fiving each other. We couldn't believe an NBA player made a million dollars. That was Magic. He was the first player to make a million dollars. What year was that? It was 85, 86, somewhere in there. But he sounded like it was like a 20 years. 25 year, years, 25 million. When you, a million a year. Yeah. Right. yeah. Mm -hmm. And we, like, me and Doc it. and Moses, like, right. I'm not talking about regular guys on the mm -hmm. team. I'm talking like, they had never made a million dollars before. Mm. Everybody was telling me that Magic scored so many points on me. But you go back, you look at the film, and you'll see who was guarding. And it certainly wasn't me because I doubt if he'd have been able to get his arm up to shoot a foul shot after the first 30 on me. You see this play happen. I'm standing there. I see the ball ricochet off. I'm about to go grab it. So I really could have messed up one of the best plays where the R back ever saw. Now, for a guy who can't jump and not supposed to be able to run that fast, he sure can get a lot done. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and let me know what is your favorite magic or bird story. So make sure you like, share, subscribe, and until next time.